OS on the BBC World Service. But we're getting reports of more protests in Venezuela. Uh, let's speak now to Girish Gupta, who is Venezuela reporter for Reuters in Caracas. And Girish, am I right in thinking you've been out and about on the streets having a look at what's happening right now? I have. I've been out and about. I've seen the, the sort of hangover from from yesterday. And last night there were a lot of lootings going on. Um, it was pretty wild out on the streets. Um, two people did die yesterday. Sorry, three, including a National Guard sergeant. Um, today people are starting to gather, but it's it's not looking like the same momentum as they had yesterday, uh, and of course they had in 2014. And this is the big question with, with protests. Will they be sustained, or will it just be sort of the odd day of huge protests and violence? And and, and which one is going is to push this country forward. Is there a sense that the lack of people coming out so far today could be in response to the three people dying yesterday? I think that's one factor. We've, you know, I've been here for about six years now. Um, I've covered protests before, and people are extremely, extremely angry in this country. Just imagine they're earning ten, twenty dollars a month. They're not eating properly. Literally, people are. You know, people's clothes are falling off them. So they're too. They're so big. And I'm not exaggerating. I'm not cherry picking a few poor people. It's like that everywhere. There's queues at supermarkets all across the country of hundreds of thousands, hundreds or thousands of people looking for real basic foodstuffs. So people are extremely angry. However, if you are that hungry and if you are spending all your time um, standing in supermarket lines and if people are dying on the streets, do you really want to go out and protest? And I guess you're also just trying to survive, aren't you? That's the bottom exactly. line. You're, exactly. Um, you know, people need to eat. They need to do their own things. They need to get on with their own lives. Um, yes, it's incredibly difficult here. And yes, many people do want to change. Even people who, who did support Hugo Chavez. You know, you see lots of people who still wear the red T-shirts and, you know, do worship. And that's not, not too strong a word. Uh, Hugo Chavez. Um, however, even they are saying they're not happy with, happy with the success of Nicolas Maduro because of all these problems with inflation absolutely soaring and shortages of, of everything. However, they need to get on with their own lives. They need to eat. Girish, um, let's just take a moment to hear how bad life has got for people in this country. Demonstrators in Venezuela called it the mother of all protests. But as the political drama plays out, some of the facts and figures concerning everyday life have themselves become increasingly striking. Despite having the world's largest proven oil reserves, since the collapse in oil prices, the country has suffered from escalating inflation. The International Monetary Fund now predicting that Venezuela is on track to see inflation rise to over 2,000% this year. Shortage of basic goods has become a daily reality for most of the country's 32 million population. According to a recent poll, 80% say they're struggling to afford food for their families, with 70% missing meals on a daily basis simply to get by. Staples like milk and bread have become increasingly scarce, and people can queue for hours outside government-controlled stores, now only open on certain days of the week, with no guarantee there'll be food left to purchase. And as food runs out, the black market is thriving and prices are skyrocketing. A pack of eggs costing $1.49 in North America can sell for over $150. Powdered milk costing just $7.24 can sell for over $703. That's more than one-fifth of an annual minimum wage salary. The country is also facing a dire hospital crisis, with its medical federation reporting that hospitals now have less than 5% of the medicines they need. Venezuela's future is unclear, but its daily reality remains stark. Girish, does that chime with what you're seeing, what you're reporting on on a daily basis? Exactly, exactly that. Um, and even you know, the, the, the figures, the, the comparative figures uh, that were given for prices there, yes, they're very interesting and they sound, they sound astounding, but it's actually even worse than that in a way because there's, certain, there's, I think, three different exchange rates now. There's the black market exchange rate. And just one thing that, that always makes me realise just how mad this economy is, is if you'd saved up uh, $1,000 in local currency when Nicolas Maduro came to power, which was what, four years ago now when Hugo Travis died, you'd now have less than $5 in the bank. Wow. Yesterday, we know that there were some um, people out supporting the government. Is that likely to happen today? Is that happening right now? 
So what, what always happens whenever you get, I've covered so many marks in this country over the years, uh, a few too many maybe, and what you always get is the, the opposition announce something huge and the government announce something to counter it. Um, during Hugo Chavez's time, the opposition marches were huge. They were like rock concerts and, and of course Chavez was the star. Um, now that's not the case anymore. The, the Chavista marches and uh, the Chavistas are also the, the followers of Chavez um, and Maduro now. Um, are, are relatively well, incredibly small compared to the opposition march. We're talking hundreds of people, maybe a couple of thousand. Um, a lot of them, in fact, pretty much all of them, are government workers who have been asked or told to, to go to these things. Girish, it's good to speak to you. Girish Gupta, who is Venezuela reporter for Reuters in Caracas. Oh.